Jews recite every day after the Tvila in the morning. So uh, there are two separate uh, mitzvot involved. One is Mechiyat Amolek, Mocho Timche et Zecher Amolek, that you will destroy Amolek. Then there is Zochor as I share also Lacha Amolek. To remember, on the surface, the two mitzvot seem to be contradictory. If we're going to destroy Amalek, so then why should we remember it? And then there's a discussion in the Mephorshim, what about the Torah when it says, Lo Sishkoch? Don't forget. Is that a love in the Torah, or is just the Torah stating an admonition to us that we should not forget Amalek? Now, uh, the Rambam already, uh, and even in the, uh, in the time of the Talmud, uh, the rabbis were unable to identify Amalek. In the time of Bayez Rishon, especially in the first few hundred years before David, uh, Amalek was a distinct tribe, nation, was identifiable. And uh, it constantly made war on the Jewish people. In the time of Shoal, Shoal was told finally to eradicate them. He was unable to do so. It was David that uh, achieves the uh, final victory over that Amalek. But uh, Amalek still survived. So uh, the Rambam says, based on the Gemara, Bosan Cheriv Ubil When the Assyrian Emperor Sancheriv conquered the Middle East, so his policy was uh, ethnic cleansing. He moved people out of their original habitats, out of their homes, so that they would not have an allegiance to where they were. And he, therefore, he mixed everybody up so that within a generation, we were unable to tell who you were and where you came from. And therefore, the Gemara says, based on that idea, uh, Amalek was no longer identifiable. And therefore, as the Rambam uh, a millennia later says, uh, there we cannot fulfill the mitzvah of Mechias Amalek, of destroying Amalek, because we can't identify Amalek. So we're left with the mitzvah of Zachor, to remember Amalek which takes on all different uh, variations. So uh, one uh, variation is to read this Parsha of Zachor. Then people are uh, careful to hear it read in the synagogue. People who don't uh, necessarily come to hear the Kriya Satora every Shabbat Nevertheless, uh, they make a point that when it's the Shabbat before Purim, when it's Parsha Zohar, because it's a mitzvah d'oraisa, you uh, accomplish the mitzvah d'oraisa through the recitation of Parsha Zohar. And since we have a din Shomei HaKaoneg, or the Kaone or the Baal uh, uh, is our shliach, so therefore we accomplish the mitzvah through that recitation. There are other Mephorshim that say that the mitzvah is accomplished through Mikro Megillah, <coughs> reading the Megillah on Purim, because Homan is from Amalek, Agogi. Agag was the king of 
Amalek. It's recorded in the story there of Shaul. And the king and Shaul allowed him to live. Shmuel is the one that executed him. But uh, in the interim, he had descendants. And Homan is his descendant. So it's Homan or Agogi. So he is from Mamolek. And when we read of the triumph of Esther and Mordechai over Homan, so that also is part of Zohar uh, to remember Amalek and to remember what he did to us. But it seems uh, we have here uh, a long-term enemy. We meet Amalek uh, when the Jewish people leave Egypt. So that's uh, a thousand years before Purim. And uh, Amalek is still there, and he's still trying to destroy us. It's interesting, there's a Gomorrah that identifies Amalek with Germany. Gomorrah calls it Germania which was the, uh, one of the uh, uh, Latin names that the Romans gave to certain Germanic tribes. Uh, so uh, the Mara says that uh, Amalek uh, can be identified as Germania. Now, what the Gomorrah meant by that, we don't know, but we can certainly say that uh, in our century, uh, Germany certainly fit the bill in its attempt to eradicate the Jewish people. So Amalek is uh, therefore uh, subject to interpretation. And to a certain extent, therefore, we identify almost all enemies of the Jewish people of which, unfortunately, there is no shortage, uh, we identify them with Amalek, even though genetically they may not be, and even though they may not be of the tribe. So we're left with the mitzvah of Zohar, but the mitzvah of Mechias Amalek no longer exists. Now, uh, in the description, Moshe says, Asher korcho baderech. So literally it meant that uh, he happened to uh, ambush you on the road. The Jewish people are marching out of Egypt. They're flush from the uh, miracles at Yamsuf. Uh, they're marching confidently and all of a sudden they're attacked. So korcho there would be Meloshon Mikre happened. It was an occurrence. But unfortunately, uh, look at it and say Korcha is um, also uh, related to the word Kor, which is cold. He cooled you off. So that's the famous Medrash that Rashi quotes, that there was a uh, great furnace of fire and anyone that would have jumped in would have been consumed. But uh, people were afraid to even come near it. But then somebody jumped in. So even though that person was destroyed, the fire was already cooled. People were no longer afraid of the fire. And that's what Amalek accomplished that uh, after Yamsuf, it says, Chilo chaz yoshe ploshes, oz nivalu alu ve'edon. Everybody was frightened of the Jewish people. Nobody would stand up to them. They were convinced that uh, somehow uh, the Jewish people were invincible. And then Amalek came and attacked them. When he came and attacked them, he cooled off the fire. So even though Amalek lost the war, 
says, Vayachalos Yehoshua as Amalek Lefi Chorev. Yehoshua weakened him, defeated him. But people already said, look, uh, this time it didn't work. Next time it'll work. You see, you can do it. And therefore, that's why it's Mulchom al Hashem Ba'amolek Midor Dor. The Boni Shalom's war with Amolek is eternal because there are always people who are willing to try it. They say, well, Amolek, this Amolek couldn't do it, but we can do it. We have the ability to do it. And that's a prevailing theme throughout Jewish history because one would think that uh, anyone that looked at Jewish history and saw that all of our enemies eventually are weakened and destroyed would hesitate. But uh, we see that that's not true. They all say the same thing. Well, he couldn't do it, but I can do it. They were not successful. You know, we fought a bunch of wars, but now we're going to fight a different war. We're going to have different tactics. We're going to be able to do it. So that's one idea of Asher Korcha, uh, that he cooled off the fire. The second idea of Asher Korcha is that he cooled off the enthusiasm of the Jews. Again, they are leaving Egypt. The great miracles have occurred. They're on the way to Har Sinai. Moshe is leading them. They're in a state of exaltation. They're in a state of euphoria. Everything is the greatest. And all of a sudden, here comes Amalek. And Amalek cooled off the Jewish people. They're never that enthusiastic again. They never feel that self-confidence again. And therefore, the whole time in the desert, uh, there is an undercurrent of Nitna Rosh Venoshuva Mitzrayma. We can't do it. That's what Nitna Rosh Venoshuva Mitzrayma means. We're going to go back to Egypt. We can't do it. And that is the effect of Amalek. That's Asher Korcha, how he cooled you off. And those of us that uh, remember uh, the euphoria that existed in the Jewish world after the Six Day War. So Jews felt they were invincible. So then uh, when uh, the Arabs uh, continued the war in a different method, and different things, in the Yom Kippur War, so then that cooled us off. And it curved uh, the enthusiasm and it changed the policies and it affected us psychologically. So that's all included in Asher Kor Chavaderech. Uh, Amalek cooled you off. And the idea of remembering Amalek, and the Mephorshim also point out, is to remember the capabilities of evil in the world and never to underestimate it. You know, we say, never again. Uh, that's whistling past the graveyard. Never again. Why not? <coughs> We know that uh, if, uh, God forbid, uh, they felt they could do it again, they would. Because uh, that's the power of Amalek. So to forget it and to ignore it and to say there is no Amalek and that's not our problem, uh, is to misread all of Jewish history and to misread what the Torah is teaching us in this week's Parsha. And so that becomes the mitzvah of remembering Amalek. By remembering Amalek, we remember all of these other matters as well. And we're able to function more properly and realistically so that eventually Amalek will never triumph over us and we'll continue to triumph over them. <clears throat>